Hi, I'm Audrey from Los Angeles. Despite coming from a poor family, a great part of my childhood was filled with happy memories thanks to my best friend, Gift. Our love for fashion drew us together. As kids, we drew clothes just like in the magazines, and then we would imagine being rich and wearing our own designs. Aw, so cute. I want to make clothes like this someday. Me too, Gift. We will get there. Just don't stop dreaming. Gift was really sweet, and I loved her to bits, even though she was shy. At school, we were the poorest, and our schoolmates didn't really like us. Once in eighth grade, Gift came to school with lunch for two of us, since we couldn't pay for the cafeteria food. We were about to eat when Britt walked up to us. She was the school's troublemaker, and especially loved to make fun of us, and Gift was very afraid of her. But my mom made it. So? She's a bad cook. Now cover that up. I grabbed Gift's hand before she could and took a big mouthful. The meal was a choke full of salt, but I forced it down. No way was I supporting Brit calling my bestie's mom a bad cook. Mm-mm. So yummy. And are you eating a hamburger today again? Watch out. It's telling on your tummy. Wh what? Like every other girl obsessed with her body, she ran away to check her actually very flat tummy in the restroom. We ate our salty food in peace, but Brit just wouldn't let us rest. I mostly endured her nasty remarks and attitude, but in 10th grade, she did something that made me lose my cool. Gift and I were in the library sketching when Brit grabbed our sketchbooks from us. Brit, give that back! Oh, what's this? You two want to be designers? <laughs> Poor people can't be designers, honey. So let me help you get rid of this dream. She raised the sketchbooks and tore them apart. And I saw red. I brought my foot up to kick some sense into her. But before it could land, my sneakers ripped in the front and my toes poked out. Everyone, look! Audrey has a rotted shoe! <laughs> Everyone laughed. And for the first time in a long while, I wanted to cry from how humiliated I felt. But then Gift took off her sneakers and gave them to me. What? You will go barefooted? I guess I'll be the school's Bigfoot today. <laughs> that day, in my eyes, Gift was like an angel. And I promised myself to do something big for her someday. The following weekend, I mended my old shoes and went to give hers back. But on arriving to her house, I saw that they were moving. Gift! What's going on? Oh, hi, Audrey. I was just about to come and give you this. She had bought me a brand new pair of sneakers. <gasps> Gift? That was super sweet of you. But may I ask, where did you get the money for these? My parents are super rich now. Gift's parents won a million dollar contract, so they were moving to a better neighborhood. I'm going to miss you so much, Gift. Oh, don't worry, I'll see you at school. I told my parents I don't want to change schools. I was happy that Gift was at the same school. But the next day at school, the news was all over that Gift's parents had hit the jackpot. And when Gift finally arrived with a brand new Ferrari, everyone stared as she walked into school with sparkly designers. Even Brit. Hey, Gift, over here. She made to come to me, but Greg, one of the most quiet students in our class, smacked into her and spilled the juice in his hand. Brit was beside them in a second. OMG! Greg! How dare you ruin my bestie's jacket! Lick it now! I am sorry. Please, let me just wipe it. Hey, it was an accident. And since when did Gift become your bestie? Since she became rich! Gift, you don't need to hang out with a poor loser like Audrey anymore. I expected Gift to reject Brit's shameless attempt to wiggle into her good graces. But what she did next shocked me. She pulled off the jacket and shoved it close to the guy's face. Lick it. Are you crazy, Gift? It's a leather jacket that can be cleaned. Stay out of this, Audrey. Unless you have five grand to buy me another jacket. I don't think so. I was so mad at her that I plucked out $10 from my pocket and flung it at her. That should get it cleaned. Without looking back, I grabbed the guy and we entered class. Well, Gift turned her back on me from that day and began to hang out with Brit and her friends. I knew they only liked her for her money, but she was too glad to roll with the popular crowd she couldn't see that. I was sad to lose a friend, 
but I took comfort in my mom, who always tried to motivate me. One day, we were cleaning out my house when she caught sight of my old sketchbook. Hey, I remember this book. Yeah, I'm not sure I can ever be a designer, Mom. Britt said it's not for poor people. And since when do you care about what Britt says? With what I see here, you're already one. Looking through the book reminded me so much of my days with Gift and made my heart ache. But Mom was right. My drawings were awesome. And even <laughs> if Britt said I didn't have a chance because I was poor, I wanted to try first. But where could I start from? My answer came days later, in the form of someone sharing flyers for a teen fashion training and competition during the approaching summer. The winner was going to get a million dollars and have a one-on-one -on -one tutorship from an unnamed popular designer that would be unveiled at the end. When I told my mom about it, she was rooting for me to go. She even asked that I tell Gift. Why would I do that? She's not my friend anymore. Maybe you'll be friends again if you do. Come on, I know you miss her. And what if she comes in and wins? Well, competition is the best form of motivation. And whether you win or not doesn't matter. The experience alone is what truly matters. Mom was right. I really missed Gift. It was the only thing that made me go to her house the next day. What are you doing here? I came to give you this. What is this junk? It's a chance for us to be designers. Like we used to dream. <laughs> Look, I don't need to be a designer anymore since I can afford designers now. So get <gasps> lost. She slammed the door in my face and I felt so embarrassed and angry. I was definitely not talking to her again. Summer holidays came by and I went to the address on the flyer for the training competition. I was shocked to see Gift there as one of the trainees. I thought you wouldn't come. Like I would let you become a designer before me. What's your problem, Gift? Why did you let money change you like this? Everyone changes at the taste of money, Audrey. Everyone. I was just about to give Gift a piece of my mind when a rickety old woman arrived. Uh, I think you missed the old people's home. No, I'm here for the competition. Everyone gaped at her. The trainee's chairs were filled up. Well, nowhere to sit, old lady. So shoo! Don't talk to her like that! I stood up from my chair and gave it to her. Bless you, child. The instructor soon came, and I had to stand for the rest of the class. My legs hurt, and Gift made sure to stick her tongue out at me all through. When class was over, the woman handed me a bunch of handmade beautiful fabric flowers. You'd be needing this. Thank you. I didn't understand what she wanted me to do with it. Until some days later, we were asked to make our first <laughs> real outfit. The best five would continue to the next stage. I made a lovely dress, but when I added the flowers to the dress, it immediately stood out. I won first place, and Gift won third. The old woman won fifth. I couldn't help but wonder why the old lady didn't use the flowers for her dress. So when I saw her waiting outside, I approached her. Thank you for helping me, but why didn't you use the flowers for your design? I don't like poke noses. Don't worry, I won't help you again. Uh, I didn't mean to… My <gasps> jaw dropped as a G-Wagon stopped before her and two guards got out. Time to go, ma'am. I could only stare. Who was this old woman who has bodyguards in a G-Wagon? The woman was about to enter the car when her hair turned to a strained angle. Ma'am, your hair… She fixed it back quickly, and the guard slammed the door before I could see anything else. But I was sure what I saw. She was wearing a wig. Was she bald? I had little time to dwell on the strange woman, because our training got harder. And soon, I had only gift to go against for the final winner to be decided. That was when I had a strange encounter with gift. I was shopping some secondhand clothing from a thrift store, when I noticed gift there too. Hey. I think you lost your way. The rich people's boutique is across this one. Oh, r really? I must have lost my way. Of course, what am I doing in a thrift store? I wear brand new designers only. <laughs> I knew she was lying about losing her way. Maybe she just wanted to save up some of her fat allowance by buying some cheaper summer clothes. It was her problem, though. I was totally focused on the final competition, which was finally a day away. Then something happened that threw me off my feet. I was getting ready for the last day of training week when I heard a thud. I rushed to the kitchen and found my mom curled up on the kitchen floor where she had fallen from a slip. Everything else happened in a blur. I called the ambulance and mom was rushed to the hospital. We needed a lot of money for a massive <laughs> surgery since she broke several bones. The day of the final competition between Gift and I arrived, but I didn't have it in me to go because mom was still in the hospital. 
Just go to the competition, honey. I will be fine. Mom, I can't leave you. You have to, Audrey. It'll be much better if you do. And so I went. But because I was so distracted, Gift beat me by a whopping five marks. The second round was the deciding one, and we were asked to take a short break before we start. While we waited, I went to use the washroom hoping to clear my head. Gift came in seconds later. I would just go home if I were you. I'm going to win this. Sorry, Gift. I won't make it easy for you. Honestly, I was quite nervous Gift could win. I hadn't dwelled on the money I could gain if I won this, but with mom needing money for treatment, the money was all I could think about now. Sometime after Gift left, the old woman came in. I hadn't spoken with her since the last time she left with a fancy ride. Seems like your head isn't in the game, child. I'm having a really bad day, if you couldn't tell. She slipped a tiny pair of scissors into my hands. Ruin Gift's final outfit, so only yours gets to shine. Easy win. With the way things were going, it was a very tempting suggestion. But I won't hurt another person for me to win. If I win, I win fair and square. Suit yourself! Minutes later, Gift and I were back on stage making our dresses. I forced myself to think of nothing else but doing my best. We finished in the evening and went home, waiting for the judge's arrival and decision tomorrow morning. I stayed by my mom all through the night. The next day, the judges arrived and Gift and I were asked to present our dresses. But when I unveiled mine, it was in ruins. Is this a prank or what? I swear, it wasn't like this, but... I turned to Gift, who was struggling to hide a smile. Gift! You insane lizard brain! You did this! I didn't do anything. Oh, yes, you did. Everyone turned to watch the old woman walk in. I now proclaim Audrey the winner of this competition. Huh? Somebody please take her to an old people's home. She's losing. Everyone watched in shock as the old woman pulled off her disguise. She still has a few gray hairs, but she was not as old as I thought. <gasps> Lara Gaga? Was Gift <gasps> saying the old woman was Lara Gaga? The most elusive and creative designer in the planet? Right as rain, kid. I want an heir that has talent, good character, empathy. Gift, you're talented for sure, but you're too selfish and proud. Audrey refused to cheat, even though she saw signs you could beat her in a fair game. But you didn't think twice about it. I was amazed to discover that the scissor stuff had just been a test, and that old woman was the designer we were all competing for. Lara Gaga threw me a small celebratory party that day and signed me a check of a million dollars. We would also have a one-on-one -on -one tutorship after school hours. With some of the money, I paid the hospital for mom's surgery, and we deposited the rest in the bank. I wasn't gonna spend it till we had a foolproof plan of how to invest it. When school reopened, I got to school in my favorite thrift wear and sneakers, but somehow everyone had heard that I was rich. I was barely surprised when Brit walked up to me and put her hands around my shoulders. Look who's a millionaire now! So what's the first thing on the list? Shopping, party, designer clothes! I was just about to shove her away when I saw Gift curled up in a corner, crying. Gift, what happened? Apparently, her parents only won a lottery, wasted their money, now they are back to being square one. I just gave her a small welcome back to poverty! <laughs> I was so mad at Brit, it felt like I would explode! Why are you laughing? I thought she was your friend! Was! Not anymore. You're my new bestie, Audrey. I'd rather have a pig as a bestie. Get lost! Brit glared at me and left, and I sat beside Gift. Hey, so you weren't in that thrift shop by accident, huh? Yeah. Audrey, I'm really sorry. When I learned that my parents had gone bankrupt, I was desperate to win, so I agreed to ruin your dress when Lara Gaga suggested it. I'm so ashamed of myself. Well... It wasn't easy for me to reject the suggestion, too. You deserve the win, Audrey. You deserve every good thing. Please forgive me. <laughs> Looking at her, the image of her walking barefoot because she lent me her shoes came to me. Despite what she'd done, I couldn't forget that. Well, I won't be touching the money I won till the next five years. So if you're coming to spend it, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I missed you, Audrey. I missed you too. No matter what you become or have tomorrow, be yourself. Be humble, make friends that stick with you through thick and thin, and be that friend. One more thing, guys. Spend wisely. 
Hi, my name is Maya, and I was born and brought up in India until one day mom's cleaning agency found her a job in the USA. I was excited about the idea, but when we got there, I felt like an ant in a giant's hand. Don't forget to like and subscribe. When we got to our new house in the US, I had several massive suitcases filled with all the clothes I designed using mom's old Saudis. I told you to cut down on your baggage. I can squeeze them in somehow. After an hour of organizing my room, I went outside to feel the American breeze. That's when I saw a pram rolling across the road and a car speeding toward it. Somebody help! I leaped into the air and got the pram, strolling the woman's baby safely to her. Oh, thank you so much. I owe you. No, don't worry about that. Call that number or come to the address. When I looked at the card, I was blown out of my mind. She was the CEO of MM, the best designer in USA. Her designs were a big inspiration to me. But when I showed my mom the card, <laughs> she wasn't happy at all. Tomorrow, I am going to meet her and show her my designs. Tomorrow, you will go to school. And when you graduate, Raj will marry you. The end. I have told you before, I'll choose my husband, not you. The real end. With that, I walked away from her. The next day, she enrolled me in a nearby school, and I wasn't even nervous until I walked in and realized how tall everyone else was. When the girls approached me, I almost puked because their dress and color combination was blindingly outrageous. I am Lisa. Everyone new here has to join my fashion club. Or you roll with the unpopular kids. Uh, i rather roll with the unpopular kids than join a Barbie doll club. What? I'm a student to the best fashion designer in the world! Well, either you're a horrible student or she's a horrible teacher. You! You're dead meat! It wasn't my intention to make her angry. It just happened. But I didn't dwell on it much because the next day, mom announced my 17th birthday would be celebrated at a really fancy restaurant. Seriously, did you hit the jackpot? Just get anything. Who are you and what have you done to my mother? I ordered food as mom asked me to. It felt too good to be true that my mom would lavish money like this. And it was. Hope the food was as tasty as it was expensive. I knew you were too cheap to pay for this. Dear, Raj just wanted to celebrate with us. At this point, I was desperate for mom and Raj to stop this marriage stuff. So I said and did the craziest thing. Uh, did I tell you, mom? That I have a boyfriend? What? what? I turned around in my seat and grabbed a random young guy about to walk past our table. Babe! Babe! We're right here! Uh... Help me out, please! You're late! Uh, yeah. Traffic. Meet my boyfriend. Hi, I'm Denver. My mom glared at the hand like it was a snake, and Raj got up with a red face. I have had enough insults from this little girl. Then maybe look for an older girl. Like, for example, my mom. Raj went redder in the face and stormed away from the table. Raj, please wait. With them gone, I could finally focus on the guy. And he was such a beauty. Thanks. And sorry for that. You owe me one. The restaurant door chimed to indicate someone coming in. And Denver's eyes went wide when he glanced toward the door. Um, sure. Maybe later, I... And you have to repay it now. Then he grabbed me and kissed me smack on the mouth. My stalker is here. Please, play along. Denver, who's this? It was the bad fashion sense girl, a.k.a. Lisa. Hey, Lisa. She's my girlfriend. Oh, if it's not Miss Big Mouth! We should go now. You didn't have to kiss me, and I don't think it's nice leaving her that way. Sorry about that, but Lisa just wouldn't take no for an answer. Still. Hey, she was mean to you, too. Return evil to no one. I imagined Lisa standing up at the deserted table with a face full of soup, and I felt pity for her. Whoa, you're bold as well as kind? Nice. I am going back in. A black limo pulled up just then, effectively distracting me. Well, that's my ride. I'm Denver, by the way. And thanks for today. Thanks, too. I am Maya. I watched in astonishment as he slid my phone out of my hand and typed in his number, calling his phone right after. Gotta hurry. See you soon, Maya. After he left, 
I made my way home, where the tension between my mom and I was like a freaking tornado. But thanks to Denver, I didn't have to brood about it. After we met, he and I were always conversing on the phone or via text till we met up a week later. My stepdad calls me bro, not son. What's wrong? Um, it's just a text. You have a boyfriend? What? No, no, it was my mom. She cut off my allowance. I was hoping to get a sewing machine with my savings and what she was supposed to give this month. You make clothes? To my surprise, he looked pretty excited when I talked about my talent and when I showed him some of my sketches. He literally whooped. Woo! <laughs> this is Maya. My mom has to meet you. What? Why? Come with me, like right now. Denver's house was a gigantic mansion. It could swallow our house a hundred times over. Once we got inside, he called for his mom. Mom! The answer to our prayer is here. My jaw fell to the ground in shock when his mom came out. It was Mae Morris. It's you! Finally! What? You know her? I invited her here. She's the girl that risked her life for Jim last month. <gasps> She's the one who got Lisa off my neck last week. They looked back at me with stars in their eyes. Mays was the most sparkly when Denver told her I could design too. She then looked my sketches over and beamed at me. Mamma mia! These designs are wonderful. Would you like to work with me to create a new fashion line? I'll richly reward you. What? Haven't you been so happy you fainted? That's what happened. The next weekend, May took me to her fashion house and introduced me to her team of aspiring fashion designers. I was shocked to see Lisa amongst them. She glared at me all through the introduction. All right, theme for today, wedding gowns. Like everyone else, I quickly began work on the material I had been given. It was a white wedding gown, and some hours later, my colleagues were staring at it. This dress is hot. Thanks. Cool. Smiling, I looked over to where Lisa was, and she seemed to be having difficulty with her design. Need help? Not from you. Suit yourself. Soon, it was time for our lunch break, so we filed out of the workroom. Some minutes after eating, we returned to the workroom. I saw my gown and screeched. Who threw black dye on my gown? I knew it was Lisa. She didn't even hide it with the big smirk on her face. May Morph is coming in five minutes. What will you do? Staring at the black that streaked the dress, I got an idea. I grabbed several colors of dye from the dye cabinet. In minutes, I turned the white wedding gown into a rainbow colored gown. Almost everyone was gaping at the dress when Mae Morif walked in. Mamma mia! Who did this? Maya, you are going places. I was overjoyed. When work closed for that day, I was prepared to go home when Lisa blocked the doorway. Truce? You tried to ruin my dress. But it turned out to be a beauty instead, hmm? She was right. In fact, May had given me the go-ahead to lead the team in designing a line of clothes that would be under my chosen designer name. It was with that excitement that I said what I shouldn't have. Denver and I aren't even dating. I went on blabbing about everything. I should have known it would come flying right back at my face. After that day, Lisa glued herself to me. We would go to the fashion house together after school hours, and she even helped me lie to my mom when she asked me why I was always home later than usual. One day, Lisa and I were at the school gate waiting for a cab to take us to our workplace when a guy in all black pulled up in a brand new motorcycle. Denver! Hi, girls. Surprised to see you two together. We're friends now. Maya, can you and I hang out today? There's this really cool arcade. How I wanted to say yes, but Lisa gripped me even tighter than as if to warn me. She can't. We're going to work. Maya, say something. Maybe next time? Denver looked at me for what felt like forever, then shrugged back on his helmet. Be careful who you choose as friends, Maya Jai. You said you weren't dating. What was that? We weren't, but maybe he wants us to. You big fool! Well, needless to say, she reverted to being a jerk. Days flew by, and soon... The day for the runway show was just a day away. As this was my big day, I saw it fit to tell my mom what I'd been up to. Mom, I have to tell you something. Like how you have been a lying, disobedient child? Mom! Your pink-haired friend told me everything. It felt like my legs were stuck to the floor. Lisa. 
Mom, I- If you step out of this house, don't come back. This is my lifelong dream. And if you want to stand in my way, then maybe you can throw my bags out when I'm back. <gasps> Maya! To get my mind off worries about my mom, I threw myself into work that day. Soon, all my colleagues left, and it was time to close. Hey, can I stay a little longer, please? All right, but I have to stay. My mom told me to lock up. Aye, aye, Captain. Hurry up, one-eyed pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Denver, I am sorry about the last time. I just couldn't leave her there. It's okay. I know how manipulative Lisa can be. Why do you hate her so much? She's just bad news. Anyway, how can I help? Working with Denver was a sweet experience. Soon, it was dark. Come on, I'll take you home now. <sighs> I am not even sure I have a home anymore. What do you mean? I told him everything and begged to stay here. The building had some sweets and a stocked fridge I could survive on. Denver reluctantly left, promising to come back early tomorrow morning. The next morning, I went to the studio where the dresses were kept, and I almost fainted with what I saw. All the dresses were shredded at the hem, and Lisa was in the middle of shredding the last one. No one was supposed to be here! Lisa, you just destroyed all of our hard work with a pair of scissors! Why? Because I hate you! I'll call the cops. You have no proof! Are you sure, Lisa? Denver! Lisa was arrested, and May Morif was in pieces. I'm done for! What do we do, Maya? I don't know. Staring at the ruins of my hard work and the thought of mom not welcoming me home combined made me tear up. But before I could let out a wail, Denver took my hand. If you could turn a stain on a dress to a glamorous design, you can do some magic here as well. I believe in you, Maya Jai. His soft words sent a boost of confidence through me, and I suddenly got an inspiration. Hey, we can turn the shredded parts into ruffles. To illustrate, I made a really quick sketch. Awesome! Cool! Wow. wow! But we have so little time! Perhaps I can help? Mom! 20 years ago, I tried to be a big shot singer, and I failed. I just wanted to protect you from the same heartbreak I felt then. But honey, your story doesn't have to be my story. I'm so sorry. It was my first time to hear that. It made sense now why she had been so adamant against my dreams. Well, want to come and rewrite your story with me? I would love to. Everyone got to work. We completed the designs in a few hours. The crowd went wild with excitement when the models got on stage wearing the beautiful dresses. Everything was like a sweet dream with my mom now rooting for me and Denver cheering right beside her. Maybe after this, we can make the boyfriend-girlfriend thing official? What? What? Hey, you think I'll take any random girl out? Please, say yes. Of course, I will say yes. But first things first. And if my son plays his cards well, my future daughter-in-law, Maya Jai! Thanks to May Morif's opening words, I was red as a tomato throughout my address. After I graduated high school, May gifted me my own fashion house and boutique, and I moved my mom and me to a bigger, better house. Told you to pack as many suitcases as you could, Mom. Oh, Maya, <laughs> this bedroom alone would swallow our former house. Hi, I'm Vera Queen. My genius dad and I had always been the best buddies. And when I was just seven, I helped him build a plane. <laughs> Firecracker, it's not playtime yet. Come, screw this nut for me. You'll see, love. This plane is going to make me super popular. You mean us? We're a team. <laughs> yes, Firecracker, us. Dad was an aerospace engineer, and he was working on inventing a remote-controlled plane. But when he finally thought it was ready and chose to show it to the world, that day, the plane refused to fly. Things were not the same between Mom and Dad after that. Mom began to pick fights with him every day. You silly man! You spent years working on that stupid invention! Now you're a failure! You should crawl up in a hole and stay there! To make things worse, Dad's invention that failed him was all over the news. It broke his heart, and Mom wouldn't even let me comfort him. You poor thing. Must have been hard with Dad forcing you to work on that plane with him. He didn't force me. I loved working with him. Days later, Dad just packed up and left without a goodbye. I was so sad and angry at Mom for making him go away. 
It didn't help that mom also began to act like she doesn't remember I exist. Sometimes she would go to work without dropping me off at school or forget to keep something for me to eat. She was terrible. One day we went grocery shopping together and she met an old friend of hers. Is this your daughter? Yeah, she's so pretty. What's her name again? Um, her name is... Sweetie, what's your name again? Is that a serious question? Real moms don't forget their children's names, ever. I was so angry I left them there and went home. But on getting home, all the anger melted away at the sight of my favorite thing in the world. The baby that would take me places. Ready to fly or still scared. It was the plane I had watched and helped my dad build as a kid. I missed my dad so much. And even though my mom was against it, I hoped that if I fixed the plane, he would come out of hiding and be a proud engineer again. Vera Queen, get out from there this instant! Mom, just a few minutes. I've told you to stop wasting time with that plane. Your dad wouldn't listen too, until it fail him. This is practice for the future, Mom. I want to be an aerospace engineer like Dad. Sounds like a fancy way of saying you want to be a failure like Dad. You will never touch that plane again, or for what? You will make me go away like you did, Dad? What do you even care? You can't even remember my name. Get out or I'll set that plane on fire. At her thread, I left the garage like the devil was after me because I couldn't bear the thought of dad's hard work going to waste like that. The tension between mom and I worsened after that. But to my surprise, four days later, she surprised me with a cake for my 16th birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. It warmed my heart, but I turned 16 five days ago, mom. I know, sweetie, I just remembered. I am so sorry I forgot. Well... I can't reject this yummy looking cake. Then take a bite. The moment I swallowed a few bites, I began to choke. Mom, did you put peanut butter in this? Yeah, why? How could you? I'm allergic to peanut. I... I couldn't say anything else because I lost consciousness. When I woke up, it was in the hospital with the witch I called my mom crying beside me. I see your plan to kill me failed. Oh, Vera, please don't say that. I completely forgot you have a strong allergy to peanut butter. I swear. You're a big liar. Unless you're sick in the head or something, how can you forget your own child's allergy? Please, let me make it up to you. Let me take you on a trip to Barbados. So you can abandon me at the airport and claim you forgot you had a child? No way! Even though mom seemed genuine, I refused to forgive her. Her explanations just didn't make sense. Two weeks later, mom came back with a guy she introduced as Smoke. He will be watching over you, at home and in school. Wait, you got me a nanny? Why? Don't question me! Look, even has a cute dog. His name is Bruno. You just want to make sure I don't go near that plane, don't you? You may as well plant cameras to monitor me. I went to bed fuming. I couldn't stand a stranger looking over my shoulder. Knock, knock. I got you some dinner since you skipped it. Oh, so you're my mommy now? Look, Vera, your mom is not in a very good place right now. Who are you to tell me about my mom? Leave! I am not hungry! Smoke kept the food on the floor before he left, and I devoured everything in seconds. Despite my best efforts, Mom refused to budge on making Smoke leave, and I had almost given up when I noticed something that made me decide to take matters into my own hands. Smoke was in love with my mom! I could clearly see it in his eyes whenever he was talking to her. One day, we had dinner out, and my mom began to choke. <coughs> Smoke flew to her, like freaking Batman! Drink water, ma'am. You don't have to pat her back, mister. I went to do it myself, but mom leaned away from me and further into Smoke. Thanks, Smoke. You're doing it just right. I was mad. I didn't even have enough of my mom to share with someone else. True, she was a meanie, but she was all I had. He had to disappear, like the Smoke he was. So I turned to the dog I could see he loved so much. So Bruno, I'm gonna give you a makeover. <laughs> now you look stunning. Oh. But when I made to stroke the dog, some of his fur began to come off and I was <laughs> horrified. I felt so guilty that at the sound of my mom and smoke coming in, I ran away to hide in the plane. While I hid, my eyes fell on two disconnected wires. I joined them back and experimentally pressed the remote. Ah. To my shock, after years of trying to revive the plane, it geared to life. It works! I am gonna fly, baby! Knock, knock. I shrank when I saw smoke at the window with Bruno. I am so sorry. I just wanted to change his color so you could get mad enough to leave. I didn't know it would make him shed his fur. Forgive me. Under one condition. You're coming with your mom and I to Barbados this coming holiday. The 
the last thing I wanted to do was join my mom on a trip where she was likely to embarrass me. But if that was what I could do to redeem myself, fine. And that was how I found myself about to board a plane with mom, Bruno, and Smoke. I was quickly uncomfortable with the men that would fly us. Is there a reason why the two of you look like you haven't slept in ages? Oh, don't mind my daughter. Her mouth has no filter. We boarded the plane, and soon we were up in the sky. While Mom and Smoke chatted like an old couple, I was all by myself. Suddenly, the sound of snoring from the cockpit reached my ears. Hey, those pilots are sleeping! I told you they looked extra droopy! Really? That means… Don't listen to her. She just wants to ruin this trip. Mom, I swear this is not a… Silence! Mom and Smoke continued talking, and I felt like <gasps> weeping because seconds later, our plane was spinning in the air. Attention passengers, please grab the parachute in the compartment above you. May the odds be in your favor. You are idiot pilots! I hadn't used a parachute before, but from the movies I had watched, it couldn't be so hard. We all jumped out of the plane, but the movies had deceived me. I couldn't activate the parachute and I just fell. I woke up to something licking my face. Bruno? Good boy. And found myself tangled up in some vines hanging from a tree. There were so many trees! Um. Oh god, was mom okay? I didn't know how she landed. Gently, I got down from the tree and gasped when I saw a cluster of eggs half my height. The size of the eggs was pointing to a very giant beast around. I opened my mouth to scream for help, but just then, I saw a huge shadow ahead. It was the head of a dinosaur! I took to my heels with Bruno right behind me. I couldn't tell for how long I had ran before I crashed into someone. Tears of relief filled my eyes when I saw who it was. Mom, it's you! Oh, I am so happy! Who are you? You must have hit your head somewhere. It's me, Vera- Stay away from me! And just like that, she took off running like a freaking antelope! Bruno chased after her. I made to follow, but I tripped over some really hard, giant poop and fell flat on my face! Ugh. Ah! Don't eat me! I swear, I am very bitter! Eat you? What are you talking about? I scrambled to my feet and my jaw dropped. The dinosaur had a human body. Smoke? I don't know if it's evolution or something, but you kind of have a dinosaur head. What? Oh, must have fallen on me when I fell. I think this place is an abandoned site for shooting a Jurassic movie. Plastic dino eggs, plastic dino poop. I get it. Look, my mom, I just saw her and she took off like she doesn't know who I am. Bruno is with her too. Oh no, we have to find them. We searched endlessly for hours. And when it began to get dark, I began to lose hope. Oh, Mom! Will I ever see her again? I know she's the worst, but I still love her! You know, your mom doesn't forget things about you because she wants to. Yeah, it's because she doesn't care. No, she has early onset dementia. Forgetting things is a part of it, and that's why she hired me. Not to look after you, but her also. I am her live-in nurse. Wait, all this while? She's just been suffering from memory loss? She won't remember me again? I wanted to tell you earlier that night in your room, cause she wouldn't. But her forgetting you today might just be the trauma of falling out of the plane. My heart was in shreds for making things difficult for my already sick mom. What if I never see her again? Smoke comforted me and asked we rest in a small clearing. We had just made a fire when the sound of something snorting behind us made us tremble. Smoke was before me in a flash like freaking commando. It's a wild boar. Run. I'll distract it. I was about to run, but the sight of a dinosaur costume on the ground gave me an idea. Roar! I am gonna have pork for dinner! To my delight, the pig turned and ran with its ears tucked in. <laughs> How was that roar? Dinosaurs don't roar, but thanks for saving my life. You wanted to save mine first, so thanks too. For the rest of the night, I talked with Smoke, and I found he was a super cool guy. When morning came, we were ready to look for mom again, but we didn't know where to start. Then I noticed some bright orange fur on the grass. <gasps> look, that's Bruno's fur! It leaves a trail. Might lead to your mom. We did, and just as we were about to enter a clearing, someone pounced on Smoke uh -huh. from behind. It was... Mom! Oh! Vera! Smoke! I rushed to her and hugged her, and Mom hugged me too! Mom, I am so sorry for being mad at you. You should have just told me you were sick. 
Oh dear, I didn't want you to worry. But when I forgot your allergy, I got scared and had to call Smoke to help. How do we get back home from here? There's no sign of the plane or pilots anywhere. Maybe we can get a flight home. Vera, he just said we can't find the plane. I took out the remote from my plane and pressed the power button. Just watch, Mom. Have faith and pray. It took two hours, but like a dream come true, my plane landed in the clearing without a human pilot. Mom and Smoke's jaws dropped to the ground. Unbelievable! Oh. You did it! Just as we had settled in, the droopy-eyed pilots came out of the bush at full speed. Please, please take us with you. We were all mad at them for the trouble we went through, but we let them in anyway. At home, our yard filled with reporters and the police. They had seen my plane fly off without a pilot and everyone wanted to know about it. Miss Vera, please say something for the millions of people watching you now. Dad, if you're watching this, I want you to see that I have proved the world wrong. Your remote-controlled plane is not a joke. Please, come back home. Oh, Vera, I am so sorry I didn't believe you or your dad. I was proud too, but sadly, dad didn't show up that day. However, thanks to my invention, after I graduated high school, I got a scholarship to study aerospace engineering at a big university just like I dreamed. Smoke and mom saw me off on my first day. Don't worry, I'll take care of mom. Smoke and mom were dating now, and I couldn't have asked for a better stepdad to be. I know you're Mr. Capable. Thanks. I was talking about Bruno. What? <laughs> Just then, I saw a man staring at us through his creepy shades. He hid like an ostrich when I looked his way. I brushed it off, and after taking some pictures with Mom and Smoke, we bade each other goodbye. As I was making my way to the campus, the spooky guy from before began to follow me. Hey, creep! What do you want? I almost fainted when he pulled off his shades. My firecracker. You're still as pretty and feisty as ever. Dad had a lot of explaining to do, but for now, I rushed into his arms. I knew you'd come back. My lesson from all this is treat everyone with kindness, because just a little bit of goodness can go a long way. What else did you learn? Please share in the comment section below. I will be reading. Some people call me the luckiest girl in my small town in Colorado. I was the only child to my successful parents who never wanted me to know what they did for a living. Once, when I was around six, I snuck into dad's office. Dad, what are you doing? Jessica, are you in my office? Where are you? Under your table. I want you to tell me about your job. Dad quickly changed the subject, the same way mom does. I didn't understand, but I couldn't complain because they bought me everything I wanted and more. And then one day, when I was around 10, my parents came back from a busy day and I was so excited to see them because the whole week they spoke about a big surprise they had for me. Jessica, come downstairs. Your surprise is here. As I ran down, I kept imagining that it was the latest iPad I asked for since I was obsessed with the latest tech devices. But when I got down, there was this girl who looked almost like me. Who is this? This is your sister. What? I thought babies come from your tummy, and she's too big to be a baby. So how is she my sister? We adopted her. Jessica, meet Rebecca. And Rebecca, please meet our one and only little princess, Jessica. Rebecca looked at me, and then she stepped forward and suddenly curtsied. Lovely to meet you, Jessica. I didn't know how to react at that moment because my parents never told me they were bringing home a stranger. Nice to meet you too, Rebecca. Rebecca took some time to open up to me, so after a week of having her around, I thought I would do something nice. So I threw her a treehouse party. But as soon as she stepped in, she suddenly fell down the treehouse. Rebecca! I was shocked out of my mind. I had no idea what had made her suddenly fall like that until I got down and she started screaming. Get away from me! This girl started freaking out on me. Her arm was injured, and I just wanted to help. Mom and Dad came running to her. Oh my goodness, what happened? Jessica pushed me down. What? I did not push you. Rebecca cried louder, and my parents rushed her to the hospital. I was so confused. Why would she blame me for something that I didn't do? At the hospital, no matter how many times I tried to explain to Mom and Dad that I didn't do anything, they still doubted me. We brought Rebecca to you because we thought you felt lonely in our big house. And if you didn't like her, you should have just said something instead of just pushing her down. While they were busy lecturing me, Mom received a phone call and signaled the dad to take me out of the room. They acted so secretive. 
But I had a bigger problem to worry about than my parents' mysterious life. I had to deal with the little lying Pinocchio, Rebecca. After that incident, I decided to keep my distance from Rebecca and focus on what I loved the most, school. I was the smartest, and all the teachers adored me. But there was one girl who couldn't stand me because she struggled to get high grades, Nancy. If you stare at your score any longer, you might just magically turn into a zero. Nancy, just bring back my results and stop being a bitter loser. You will always stay one step behind me. When Nancy waved the paper in front of my face for me to catch it, Rebecca suddenly tripped her and she fell flat on her face. I don't need you to fight my battles. I disliked Rebecca so much after the stunt she pulled, and now she was trying to save me. That's just crazy. And then during recess while I stood in the line to buy my lunch, Rebecca was right behind me and suddenly speaking to me. I'll tell your parents the truth. You didn't push me. Why did you do that? I did nothing bad to you. When your dad called you their one and only princess, I felt so jealous. Because why did they adopt me when they already have someone they love so much? I'm sorry that you feel that way. But our parents love us both. They were really worried about you after you injured your arm. Rebecca suddenly hugged me and cried on my shoulder. Thank you for calling them our parents. It means a lot. After that, I grew fond of Rebecca, and we became the best sisters ever. Years went by, and then we were in high school. Rebecca and I had a bond that could never be broken. And then one day, I found her crying in the bathroom. Rebecca, what happened? Oh, Jessica, everything is going to be ruined now. Hey, talk to me. Tell me what's wrong. My real mother is here. She's the new janitor. Rebecca has been in our lives for so long, I even forgot that she was adopted. That's great news. At least now you know who your real mother is. I've always known who my real mother was. She left me at the orphanage when I was eight, and I was lucky that your parents adopted me then. But now she's here and she wants me back. Rebecca told me not to say anything to mom and dad, but I couldn't stop thinking about this. I loved Rebecca so much, and I didn't want anyone to take her away. So that night, I waited for her to fall asleep, and then I snuck into mom and dad's room. I found Rebecca crying today, but she asked me not to say anything. We are glad you came to us with this, hon. Yes, and don't worry, no one will be taking your sister away. She is our family now. After speaking to my parents, I felt so relieved and was able to finally go to bed. And then the next day, when Rebecca and I got home after school, we found mom and dad in the living room with Rebecca's real mom. Rebecca suddenly looked at me angry and lashed out. I told you to keep it a secret. I, I know, but- But nothing, Jessica. You broke my trust. She ran off to her room, and that was the end of our sister bond. Then the next thing mom and dad said made no sense. Rebecca's mom will be living with us for a while. She wants to get to know Rebecca. And we think it's a spectacular idea. No, mom. She left her when she was just a little girl. Why are you doing this? I was struggling so much back then, and I really didn't want to give her up. Please, she's all that I have. After hearing her story, I felt sorry for Rebecca's mom and accepted mom and dad's decision for her to stay for a while. But Rebecca was not happy at all. The next day at school, Rebecca planted a little surprise for me in my locker. <gasps> Rotten cheese. It made my entire locker smell. <laughs> I see you got my little gift. Rebecca, why are you doing this? You know why. Because you ratted me out. And rats eat rotten cheese. I only told mom and dad to protect you. Now get this cheese out of my locker. Now. Rebecca suddenly pushed me against the locker and spoke to me so harshly. It's like she turned into a monster overnight. I'm done being your friend, you spoiled brat! Rebecca, you are acting out for no reason. After what happened with Rebecca, I wanted to ask my parents to speak to her. But when I got home, she was already there with Nancy. And when I entered, my parents looked upset with me. Jessica, why did you attack Rebecca at school? This is so unlike you. What? She's lying. I would never do something like that. Her friend says she saw the whole thing. They're both lying. Rebecca started crying on Nancy's shoulder, and when my parents weren't looking, Rebecca <laughs> smiled wolfishly at me. I have a very big reputation at school, and I would never lie. Your daughter Jessica acted like a wild barbarian at school today. 
If I'm a barbarian, then you are the devil himself, standing here and lying to- That's enough. Now go to your room. This is unacceptable. You're grounded for a week. I couldn't believe my parents didn't believe me. They looked at me like I wasn't their child. And while I was moping about what happened, I heard some voices from outside my bedroom window. When I peeked through my curtain, I saw my parents and Rebecca's mom. I opened my window slightly without them noticing and managed to hear everything they were saying. The girls will soon turn 18 and we need to plan their next step. Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on all that money their parents left them. Yes, I'm tired of playing sweet daddy. I should be on an island enjoying the sea breeze. And I don't have to play the stupid role of being the janitor. I can't believe how smoothly our plan worked. They are now at each other's throats. It's going to be a piece of cake getting them to sign those papers. I couldn't believe what I had just heard. My heart raced as I heard footsteps by my door. I quickly shut my eyes tight as the door opened. Jessica? Jessica? I kept my eyes closed, hoping that she would eventually go away. She's fast asleep. That's good. We should be careful where we have our meetings now. After they closed the door, I opened my eyes and started panicking. I had to speak to Rebecca. The next morning, I overslept. When I went downstairs, I had to be strong and pretend like I heard nothing. Good morning, sleepyhead. You're up late today. Yeah, I forgot to set my morning alarm. At least I still have time for breakfast. Actually, you don't. We're almost late for school. Okay. I'll just grab an apple. As soon as we entered the school doors, Nancy hung onto Rebecca like glue. Hey, best friend! Rebecca, I need to talk to you. Oh, buzz off, Jessica! You buzz off, Nancy! She's my sister! Adopted sister! Rebecca pushed past me, with Nancy smiling wickedly at me. And when Nancy ran off to go to the bathroom, it was my chance to get Rebecca alone. Rebecca, I have something really important to tell you. Hey, girls! Are you two back to being best sisters? No, and stop following me around school. I don't want people to think that I'm the janitor's daughter. When Rebecca walked off, I tried to go after her, but her so-called real mother held me back. Give her some space. She'll talk to you when she's ready. Just having her hold my arm gave me the chills. After she went off, I knew what I had to do to get Rebecca to hear me out. When it was time for cheerleading practice, I waited for everyone to leave the room, and once the coast was clear, I opened Rebecca's locker. I still remembered her password, and then I quickly searched for her hairbrush, got strands of her hair, and put everything back. I ran to the school science lab, where I thankfully found my science teacher, Mrs. Broody. Jessica, what can I do for you? I need to test these two samples to see if the DNA matches. I gave Mr. Broody a sample of my hair and a sample of Rebecca's hair. Whose hair samples are these? It's mine and Rebecca's. I overheard my parents talk last night and they said some really shocking things. Okay, please don't tell anyone I did this for you. It's against the school policy. I left the samples with Mrs. Broody and the next step was finding out who my real parents were. As soon as I got home after school, I searched for my ID document inside my chest drawer. In that moment when I found it, mom appeared. Jessica, I didn't know you were back from school. Yeah, um, I just got back and I'm going to the library. I felt so awkward around everyone in the house because in my head I knew they were strangers. And as I passed my mom, she suddenly held my hand and I froze. Do you need a ride to the library? No, I need the exercise. So, I can walk there. I felt so relieved when I got out of the house, and I felt like I was being followed. But every time I looked back, there was no one. Until I noticed our gardener standing next to a dustbin, acting like a street person. Mom obviously asked him to wear that disguise and follow me, but I was no fool. I continued to walk towards the library, and then ran in and out the back door, until I lost Mom's spy guard. When I finally reached the home affairs department, my heart almost stopped when the lady told me that my ID document was fake. How can I find out my real identity? Simple. Your fingerprint. You can fake a document, but not a fingerprint. Once my fingerprint was taken, the police suddenly appeared and took me in for questioning. Why am I here? We have been looking for you and your sister for 17 years. When your parents passed away, they left you under the care of the state. But when we went to search for you, you and your sister were nowhere to be found. But all this doesn't make sense. The parents who took care of me gave me everything. 
The people who have been illegally taking care of you have been your uncle and his wife. Your parents had two trust funds. One was to give you and your sister the best life possible as kids. But your fake parents withdrew all that money and the next trust fund is more than millions and will be released when you and your sister turn 18. When the officer was about to tell me what to do next, my phone rang and it was mom. You should come home, Jessica. Something has happened to Rebecca. I immediately ran out of the station after I got mom's call. My sister was the only real family I have and I would protect her at any cost. When I got back home, the people whom I thought were my parents were waiting for me in the living room with Nancy. What happened to Rebecca? Where is she? We'll tell you once you tell us what you've been up to. What is going on here? Why are you here, Nancy? Because you've been living my life all this time with my parents who sacrificed their time with me to be fake parents to you. All for the sake of money. And now, you will not ruin things for us. Fine, you can have all the money. Just tell me where Rebecca is. I could hear <gasps> Rebecca screaming through the walls. Please, just let her go. You will have to wait until it's her real birthday, which is actually in two days' time. And then, while these wicked money greedy people were smiling wickedly in front of me, a gang of cops busted into the house. I guess Rebecca and I will have our happy birthday after all, while you rot in prison. Rebecca's fake mom was also found and arrested, and my real sister and I lived happily ever after. <laughs> the lesson here, money greedy people always get caught out. But an honest living will take you a long way.